Well, it's a great pleasure to introduce Chan Chun Li, who's going to talk about unirolled and rationally connected. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Uh, so thanks, Stephen and the organizer for inviting me to this workshop. It's actually starting. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm late. <clears throat> Teaching two courses yesterday. <laughs> Romanian geometry and the complex analysis. I think we have complex <laughs> someday. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, so so Stephen asked me to give survey talks about about rational spatial geometry. I don't know I'm qualified to do that, uh, but uh, I'll try my best. <laughs> okay. This is a outline. Today's lecture, I don't know all that. Uh, uh, I want to start with uh, uh, <clears throat> just a quick overview uh, comparing uh, these two categories, sympathetic category and the uh, projected category. And I, I introduce uh, Rational equivalence in that geometry, defining it using the notion of homomorphism, homomorphism, and then you quickly go there. So you have seen it yesterday. I think uh, this is talk. Yeah, it's actually very sophisticated invariant, <laughs> like a tangency invariant, <laughs> very sophisticated. I go. Uh, I'm going to use uh, the important invariant and then the garden version of the standard. Version. Then I, I'm going to introduce the notion of we need to uh, manifolds. And well, also recalling the notion of union varieties in the algebraic geometry. Mm -hmm. uh, discuss properties of such manifolds, and then I uh, move on to rational connected manifolds where we know much less in the synthetic category. Mm -hmm. uh, if I time, I, I, I break away how. How uh, the Gorman theory is used to uh, study the bilateral synthetic bilateral property of the uh, manifold. So that, that's the plan. First talk. Uh, let me start with some philosophical <laughs> light. So, uh, well, a synthetic structure is very a simple structure, it just has a two form, right? It is the most non degenerate two form. Uh, so, so nowadays we know there, there are a lot more sympathetic manifolds than uh, fatal manifolds and projective Many, many more. I think, I think 40 years ago, it wasn't the case, I guess. Well, yeah, well, I think <laughs> the Pidara assessed a manifold with the with the first one, I mean, Kadara found it, but it was first in the case. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't. Yeah. So, right, it was so, it was, this this manifold, four manifold called Kadara, first manifold was studied by Kadara as a compact surface in the 50s. Then, uh, so the rediscover it. A synthetic form manifold uh, from the point of view as a T2 bundle, uh, where the T2 fibers are homologically in That's the essential uh, part uh, that uh, being uh, synthetic. So, uh, the, from then on, I think in the 80s, uh, well, there's still conjectures, a lot of conjectures like, saying that, uh, like, uh, the synthetic form manifolds are still not too far away. These four are not too far away from Taylor surfaces. But then the uh, so many new forms, synthetic form manifolds constructed, like Stomp, which will show the striking result every uh, finite group, the real line group of synthetic form manifolds. So this is clear contrast. I think so. Okay. Taylor surfaces have serious restrictions on the bundle of the Taylor surfaces. 
And even in the simply connected case, there are very many uh, exotic synthetic copies, synthetic copies. So, <clears throat> so there, there's really no chance to classify that manifold even in, in dimension four. Uh, nevertheless, nevertheless, somehow there are so some kind of manifolds surprisingly uh, still resemble uh, smooth projecting varieties in a few uh, aspects. So uh, I'm going to quickly, but I'm going to very briefly in the next uh, 10, 10 slides briefly uh, mention some of these uh, aspects. So I, this is just, I have, you know, my uh, narrow point of view of uh, this comparison, so it's limited to my understanding. But uh, I will touch on some of the aspects today and uh, on the next uh, two talks. So first of all, uh, projective manifolds are always going to be used. So that manifolds uh, after you choose a polar. <clears throat> so which and. Uh, so the Kähler, of course, is often this more meaningful to compare Kähler manifolds with that manifold. Kähler manifolds already have a Kähler form, which is a symplectic form. And the, the, of course, they're all complex manifolds. So after taking a tame the symplectic structure, symplectic manifolds are all complex manifolds. So this is point of view is very important, especially that it is used Almost factor defined correlative errors. Uh, so sometimes if we want to do all of them as complex manifolds and see, see how they behave. So, for example, like uh, so the fuel component curve theory uh, is a great uh, uh, example. So, you can call it an almost complex manifold. Okay, so this and and also can define a similar invariance for all these manifolds. So, particularly the, the notion of a canonical class. <coughs> uh, so, again, first meta manifold, this is defined by choosing the first between the only complex structure. And once you have this notion, so this is a degree two uh, integral cohomology class. So, once you have such a notion, and then you can define the notion of a uh, BL manifold. And uh, it's just the non-dividing of this class. And then you can also define uh, monopole manifolds. It's, it's uh, defined by <coughs> requiring the canonical class to be a, a, a negative monopole of the synthetic form. So this uh, monopole manifold is an analog to the tunnel. So I, I will mention uh, this aspect a little bit today and uh, more uh, tomorrow. <coughs> Of course, it's yeah. so well known that synthetic Torah manifolds are all Taylor. Yeah. You have a maximal symmetry or a symmetry that's a mathematics become restricted to a okay. This is very uh, nice. And then uh, by studying uh, general. Group actions, Hamiltonian group actions, are some bad manifold can find some bad portions. So this, so this portion is compared with the EIT, and this comparison is going to be very, very useful. Like, like studying uh, the system of the spectral Taylor matrix, bundles, and manifold. So, <clears throat> and in both category, you can you find blow up and blow down. Uh, these, these appear at basic uh, operations in, in the notion of our actual equivalence. So actually, it's interesting. I mean, uh, so uh, that uh, you cannot really define blow up, blow down in almost complex categories. In the same vanity, almost. So <laughs> you can define as after observed, you can define it in the vicious way. Right, obviously, almost complex. So we can blowing up, blowing down, blowing up a point. Okay, but in general, you cannot after. This is one of my observations with uh, uh, William John and uh, 
So in general, you cannot define a source blow up for a general. What you mean is that if you blow up and you can pull back the the Well, actually, we just, uh, I think we're in our. No, actually, we, our example has nothing to do with some structure, just purely. Yeah, no, yeah no, I know. Yeah, you yeah. forget the symbol. Yeah, just, just say that you don't have no you on the map. You don't have a map, almost complex map. Right. But, uh, if you start with an almost complex map, you can try and blow up point, then you don't get a smooth on the point. Right. Right. Such that the, 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 the map yeah, well, you know, is smooth. Right. 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 But, yeah. yeah, actually, we'll find a particular example of a formal complex structure on K3. Okay. Using a simple invariant, you can use the way to study the behavior that you are showing that it's actually impossible to go out in general, uh, in homo-complex geometry. So, so maybe, you know, this is not what we're always able to do. If you blow up and blow down, it's in fact, geometry is not, you know, not so, it's not a given. <laughs> it's well, just, yeah, it's yeah. perfectly fine. It's, it's fine, but, you know, like, do you can study this. I studied this like many years ago, and there are different point of views of how, how you do this construction. So, for example, you and the uh, team must give a very detailed construction uh, in, in your book, like 10 pages. Right, he's <laughs> it's a very, very precise guy. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's actually pretty, it's a little bit tricky because, especially when compared to different blow ups, you know, this is this different with like uh, from complex uh, in, in the complex category, the blow ups more straightforward, right? You construct it. And, well, of this compact manifold very straightforward. In the manifold, in, in, in law, it's more like a topological construction, mm -hmm. right? So, so then, when you choose, but in any case, topologically, it's just a connected sum, right? It's a... That's right. Yeah, yeah, blowing up a point in, in dimension n just a connected sum with CPM bar. That's right. right. Uh, but uh, what 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 about a syntax? So even for okay, when you do Kähler blow up, there's you need this. First, I think to prove that uh, if you have a Kähler kind of form, you blow up, right? So it's not uh, totally trivial. So you just construct Kähler kind of form. But that, that just very, so I, I saw it in construction like in you know, our <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So I have mentioned this, uh, okay, these constructions uh, today, and as well as the most of I already mentioned I already mentioned the pseudo holomorphic curves. Uh, so this is how this this pseudo holomorphic curve theory, of course, is very powerful, can be used to uh, define uh, various kind of invariants, particularly invariants for homology. And uh, the world wind, in turn, the world wind invariants are used to define the notion of uh, unit root manifolds in synthetic geometry as well as rationally connected manifolds. So these are analogs of uh, unit root varieties, rational connective by the algebraic geometry. But these notions in the algebraic geometry do not use like invariants; they just use probably the curves. These are very big curves. Uh, so I think like 15 years ago, uh, it was very interesting comparing these notions in, in two categories. Uh, so we'll see some of my efforts and other people's work like in today's lecture. There are these two notions in uh, the category. And then on the opposite end, we have divisors in both categories. So, so Donaldson has this amazing uh, construction of uh, spirit and for synthetic divisors, uh, geometry, Donaldson divisor. And then and the complement right. of such divisors on varieties and the behavioral domains. And uh, so in between, you have Stein manifolds and Einstein domains. <clears throat> uh, then, you know, like, uh, there, you can compare these notions. And there are lots of work, I think, in this direction as well. Like, a lot of work. I mean, the minimum, for example, the minimum discrepancy of isolated singularity 
seven select variants of unity, and there's a fine variety. Seven variants of a mock bar, and the tensions of a fine variety. <clears throat> All right, so this is so uh, for some manifolds of co dimension two. Now, <laughs> dimension four, uh, the curves are divisors. So we have tools. We have tools <laughs> on both sides, right? Curves. And uh, so here, <clears throat> we have, we know actually. Not more uh, uh, comparing these two categories. So, so, for instance, we can we can use the minimality for four dimensional sometimes four manifolds. And there are people continue to uh, <coughs> introduce the dimensional car dimension for four dimensional sometimes four manifolds. There is a, a cone theorem for curves, or in full generality for. for and it contains almost complex structure. The analog complement is proved by the way you done. And then we have the equality coldness between curve counting and a divisor counting. So we view the cyber witness theory, cyber witness theory as a divisor counting. It's counting the sections. The large limit is. It's reduced to counting sections of a line body. Yeah. Uh, so, so for, for so I need to mention like a, yeah, like, you know, 1990, there's, there's a user proved this very nice, amazing result that uh, this, this is having a synthetic sphere with non negative self intersection. Then uh, four manifold must be rational. So we'll we'll recast this result in, in, in the, from the point of view of the root of manifold. Okay. So, and uh, so actually, uh, I think the I was a student in the nineties. Uh, I think the paper is sort of uh, I mean, interested in the subject. <laughs> you know, I, and then, right, another companion result is that uh, if the synthetic sphere has a positive self intersection, then the four manifold must be rational. And this is a nice economy here. Uh, we'll see that it's, uh, it's somewhat, somewhat generalized to uh, higher dimensional. And then, okay, so also, you know, we also like you know, like the uh, lot about the synthetic structures, um, the rational or root four manifolds. So already, as in the such classification results, some some of some of these some of these this direction. So here's the one. So on a root surface. Rational surface, any two uh, deformation equivalents, uh, so any two synthetic forms are deformation And uh, if they're if they have they're co homologous, then they are taking more. So this is a actually very, very, very basic result. You know, like uh, when we study, when we study like some polymorphism group, uh, such four manifolds, so we can reduce just you know, saying okay, the result is really only depends on the cohomology classes that form. So, so we can package the results of some kind of morphism group rational root surface as some uh, functions over the so called synthetic cone. Uh, that's for now. This uh, the result only after the only time just only and classes. So we can just look at the uh, possible homologous classes that are formed. That's all. So then for for each point, I have to be a homomorphic type. So that means the root will well, probably be like the root. Can you tell me root? Hi, I. Synthetic mixing group. 
So we have to see if we can understand the group, so this sign of group, or this point of synthetic. So this is point of view. So we can study the so the stability, stability have of uh, this uh, and the change. We type the synthetic group. So we can get some calculated work. Correct description. Stability of the change because the synthetic cone itself uh, itself has a very nice compared to description. So, so this is this structure is you know that's really rigidified. Um, these static structures on the rational form manifold. Tianjun, uh, just to go back a, a bit to the basics. Uh, here by curves, I guess you mean simplex locally uh, minimal. Uh, Curve, right? Symplectic curve, which are local and minimal in some sense. Uh, yeah, actually, I more, uh, yes, like, like smooth sympathetic curves certainly are curves. Uh, like positively inverse curves are curves in this category. Uh, oh, cuspidal curves. Is there, is in, in the four dimensional case, is there uh, a correspondence between curves and uh, Complex line bundles. Oh, that's, that's, a, that's a very good question. Uh, this this is actually uh, right. So, so the last bullet right. answer that question to some extent. Okay. So, if the the, the complex of line bundle somehow corresponding to non trivial cyber Witten there. <laughs> But in symplectic geometry, when we think of a curve, we parameterize it. We have a map from a Riemann surface into the manifold. Yes. We don't think of it as a solution of equation, as an, of an equation, which would be like a fraction of a line bundle. Oh. I mean, we think of it as parameterized. Um, so that's I, a different point of view. That's the way we analyze it using the Jehelmov curve equation. Okay, so there, there is no line bundle associated to a curve. Then. Well, in, in two incidents, at least we have sort of this uh, restored as a divisor and yeah, I mean, the correspondence. Yeah, I mean, the theorem, yeah, that, that you can, you can in, in some in sense, four dimensions, sense. but in, in higher dimension, our curves are parameterized. Right, right. I don't understand. OK, thanks. I think yeah, another incident is a Donaldson divisor, the construction Donaldson. So like in dimension four, and maybe because he construct this divisor as a section of a, of a as a section a zero set of a section, but the section is a asymptotic holomorphic mm -hmm. section. Uh, but in general, yeah, this is a very good question. But you know, I thought I'll, about it, but just uh, you cannot have a global generally you cannot kind of have a global section, maybe locally in some sense. Uh, and also taking limit generally, if you re even you restore, you, you have to take the limit. Like right? how oh, this this quality here, you, you actually you do not still you do not represent the uh, curve constructed by house as a set zero, uh, the zero set of a global set. You 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 construct this uh, holomorphic curve as a limit of currents. The limit current where each current is the zero set of a global section. Mm -hmm. So, so you, yeah, he, he deformed uh, the cyber weighting gradient by large volume synthetic structure. So, along the deformation, along the deformation for, for each T, so you have uh, a zero section, but the zero section, uh, you have a, so, yeah, you have a section that the zero set is not holomorphic. It's not holomorphic. Only when you take the limit, being the each the zero set as a current, and the limit as the right. limit right. is a is a, as a current. It's actually a pseudo homomorphic current. It has tangents. They satisfy the each where, where you, wherever you can define a tangent space is invariant under it. So it also and also I want to find a number of similarities. So so, so yes, yeah, actually in general you you can realize. It's, it's a little bit, but in a special situation, you know, when omega is a rational, a rational class, you take large multiple of that, then it's 
this corresponding element somehow can be represented as a body plate. Right. And so, yeah, yeah, thank, thanks for the answer to the question. So, so in other words, um, you know, uh, even in the Donaldson uh, ample divisor case, I imagine that that can only be approximated. So, so it only really correspond, if anything, to a line bundle as a as an R line bundle, not even a Q Q line bundle. No, as an R line bundle, in some sense, as a limit. All right, uh, let's uh, let's the well, uh, Q line bundle actually take an integral power. It's you just take it start with a line bundle with omega. Classes. So the churn classes of these divisors are are rational cohomology. Donaldson's construction or the Donaldson will construct is like for okay. assumption is you can say well, let's start with simple assumption like oh, I do have a sympathetic form for say uh, theorist integral. And then you take, then after taking large, sufficient large multiple, uh, say L, uh, then the class L, L omega is represented by a that is an SMN. A anyway, let's let's discuss this later, right? Okay. <laughs> All right. Of course, this is a lot. Mirror symmetry, which I know a little. It's, uh, it's a different kind of a comparison of a and uh, complex geometry. Defining uh, the two geometry uh, or a mirror, uh, mirror pairs. <clears throat> okay, it's like come back to co concrete definition. <laughs> this is just a broad overview. My limited understanding. <clears throat> uh, again, I think this is in the late eighties. Uh, uh, so this is related to the comparing uh, sympathetic quotients in GIT. They were inspired by that, so he, they 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 study the bi. They have a paper, you mentioned paper called birational equivalence in sympathetic category. So in that paper. Uh, they formally introduced the notion of uh, birational uh, avoided, avoided. So this is defined by the you know, Hamiltonian circle action, a semi-free Hamiltonian circle action on, uh, on a two-dimensional higher manifold. So, so you have a, such action on two and on two. Okay? Manifolds and synthetic quotients are two and dimensional. Uh, manifolds, the general formula, but the students have to semi free, so we get smooth synthetic quotients. A two two and dimensional synthetic manifolds are all connected through this picture, sequence of pictures. Then we say that they are uh, directionally supported. Uh, there are other notions of a sympathetic corporism really related to contact structure. This is here, this is a, a, a notion that is just defined in terms of Hamiltonian circle. Uh, so, all right. Uh, so, so here we'll see that, uh, I mentioned the sympathetic blow up, blow down. This is what we studied by, and then uh, so, what's the relation between this uh, general not, not surprisingly, uh, you have this basic factorization uh, which says that uh, any virtual cohort can be called in simple uh, What is the simple cohortisms today? And integral linear uh, formations of a sequence. Okay, yes, okay, yeah, I, I mean, you. 
This is just uh, your, your, your deform in the integral theory, right? You deform the class. Okay, so, so, so this is what I'm... You deform from one integral to another. No, no, not the unit. No, the deformation is in the integral class. But the form, you, the two forms are not necessary. Oh, so it's just uh, this omega plus t kappa. Kappa is a close to form. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, the, the, but this is not surprising to you. That, that such uh, deformation here as well, yeah. as long as it's properly defined, because uh, you can interpret Boseman, Heckman, relating the symmetric structure of the different symmetric coordinates uh, along a path with no further as a uh, z linear This This kappa is uh, the turn class. So, uh, but then it's curious. So uh, okay, this uh, this uh, kind of uh, how, how general is this kind of uh, uh, information? So So it turns, as I said, essentially they're actually the same as general deformation. Uh, well, here's a maybe a little lemma that uh, which is useful uh, to show that general deformations So here, assuming they have two paths with some forms. Where does the metaphor form? There are two endpoints that have relative rational period. So, uh, but you know, like uh, the space of the form is now convex, unlike the space of Taylor form. You cannot just do linear combinations of two the form when you get a symmetric. So you can only do it for uh, simultaneously, J tables. So, so here it takes a little, little bit uh, small effort to show you can zigzag, you can zigzag the construct sequence of the uh, linear deformations uh, replacing this uh, uh, information relating to the two forms of relative rational So maybe hopefully this will convince you that actually general deformations can have to be and and be decomposed. So here we, we use the uh, existence of local convex neighborhood. It, it's not the space is not globally convex, but you it's in a locally convex neighborhood. So you can do local yeah, so local convex linear combination. <clears throat> And so you, so you cover cover this uh, interval you know, y between one by some small intervals where over each interval uh, the, the family lies in the complex neighborhood or the complex neighborhood. So, all right. So the upshot is that uh, mm -hmm. View so so now two two irrational coordinates and pentamanifold manifold and just two manifolds were related by uh, roll up roll down and the uh, general well you can actually also start with this definition as the irrational equivalence in, in that geometry uh, meaningful uh, definition. Of course, this is vastly well. This looks like vastly different from the notion of our actual in complex geometry. 
Oh, uh, 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 you know, to, to view a projective manifold as a symmetric manifold, you need to uh, choose a polarization. It's uh, a, a apple, a very apple line bundle. And then, and then you can construct. Uh, so this, of course, gives you, you know, wise, this gives you a Taylor form. For this Taylor form, of course, you know, for a family with Taylor forms, isotopic family. Or this Taylor form I was to be. Constructed by uh, uh, embedding from this very apple line bundle to a projective space, and you restrict the forbidden study form uh, to, to the image. Uh, so, so, this this kind of form is well defined uh, for isotopy. So, you have a well defined symmetric uh, manifold. Uh, okay. Yeah. So how to reconcile and prove uh, this? Uh, how to how to compare the elements of our actual equivalent in two categories? In the late nineties, early two thousand, the uh, weight factorization theorem. So it says. Twenty years ago, uh, any bilateral map between uh, smooth projective varieties and factor suggests succession of a polar figure. So, in particular, so we know two projective. Two parameter projection uh, over any polar of bilateral components. Uh, you, so if you choose different polarizations, then, then you can consider the Taylor form, you can deform the Taylor form, the Taylor forms, right? And then you can throw in the polarization. So, so actually, this fact tells us. Uh, the note the bilateral equivalence are defined through blow up, blow down, general information forms uh, is reasonable. Okay, so this is this is the first part. It's, Second part is using the bilateral equivalence in symmetric geometry and geometry. Now, I'd like to quickly review the notion of the variant because uh, this is uh, this is needed to define uh, notion of unique rules in a bilateral triangle in geometry. <clears throat> so quickly, so to define such invariant, we need to resort to homomorphic structures to uh, obtain the homomorphic structures. And, uh, consider uh, a fixed uh, homology, degree two homology class in the stud, uh, study the modular space of a uh, pseudo homology. Okay, I just restrict the rational curve, but in general, uh, because, well, I restrict the rational curves because uh, only, only variance, zero invariance is useful. The All right, so you have this uh, space of curves, uh, and uh, you take some mark, a number of mark points, and do this uh, map in the mark points. You can pull back cohomology paths uh, on the standard manifold to your modular space, and then you integrate the products of this pull back classes to get a number. Hopefully, yeah. And this is a uh, uh, 
This is the definition of error. If you let me just see the error. Two of our graphic curves with a part A, part B cycle and the view to this form of this insertion part. So give me a little bit more details. Function. Uh, maybe I don't give you too much details. <laughs> Uh, but here, the important things is we should consider stable. So, so these these are the maps with finite the order one group. This is very finite symmetry. So, uh. Uh, so you can make the mass stable in your body. So you can add some points. This is a very, this is very important. And stability is very important here. Uh, so the old world world is required to be finite. So this is the math of the symmetry of the map. And then we find the modular space of the set of equivalent classes of the math. So and so this so the this all the equivalent of the modular space is, is the equivalent class system. So that's why we stable. And then uh, the index theory you can see the length of the hanger. So I feel like it's easier, but it's usually equal to zero in our case. So this is the this, this is the dimension formula for the n. So any uh, n and any class a and a is the number of our points. So we have a one mark one mark point and then I split this point. Okay, and n is the complex dimension. So this is the virtual dimension. Of course, there's a whole story. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to make this technical difficulty. And then, as I mentioned, there are evaluation maps to the uh, mark points. So, so each mark point, you look at the image. And then you go back to the whole model process and take the product. You need to verify the model space. So, so, so that the integration makes sense. Well, uh, also, you want a regularity to verify the model space. So, for some this will always work uh, if the uh, symmetric manifold. It's semi simple and the g is zero. This is very describing the input. So, this is this is very broad class of uh, uh, manifolds in a zero curve, like all four dimensional, six dimensional. So, the only theory, I always remember that these no problem at all. Four and six, which is pseudo cycle. So, uh, you can define them more geometrically. Uh, okay. Uh, <coughs> so these are the, I, I just introduced a so called like a uh, primary there. Right? You just define it through uh, pulling back whole one class kind of uh, spread manifold. Uh, but then you you also have cohomology classes sort of um, um, sort of um, uh, from the modular space of a curve itself. Yeah. So you, you incorporate classes like a, from uh, in this internal classes in the modular space of curves with mark points. Uh, then you can define a so-called descendant. So, so precisely uh, each for each mark point. You have an overflow complex line bundle over the mod by space map uh, whose, whose fiber is just the cotangent space, the Riemann surface, the domain 
vision of the surface. Yeah. So you, yeah. And then if you take the first chain class of this line bundle, and then you incorporate this, this classes, uh, all these mark points, uh, you, you have so called extended. Uh, so, uh, a basic property is of a well, with invariant primary or descendant is that they, they are invariants of the synthetic structures. Okay. The, yeah, they have the uh, choice of a J. And moreover, they are invariants of a deformation class. So, so you see, naturally, like, with invariants are sort of like a fit well with the uh, birational, uh, this birational point of view, because the birational synthetic manifolds. I can find in terms of the deformation, the blow up and blow down. So already you see that, that there's a potential for global invariance to be a birational invariant yeah. under sympathetic deformation. <laughs> of, of course, these invariants do change under blow up and blow down. And it's actually, uh, it's not so easy to determine the effect and the effect of this change of single with invariant under blow up and blow down. It's, the formula could be very complicated. You need some assumptions. Uh, some metaphor, the, the, the you normal know, one knows to figure out that the effect of the change of a uh, single goal would be invariant. In this definition, what are the the VI and the tau? Oh, I, I, hmm? oh e, di just some integers. Okay, so, so, so when you pick the uh, uh, arbitrary integers, as long okay, you actually can pick any integers. Okay. But uh, only yes, the the the, the topological uh, the degree, but you want a degree to to add up. Uh, well, even a degree does not add up. You can still define the invariant. It's, 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 it's yeah. zero. Okay, working with the zero invariant, and so it's a it's a simple equation. Well, for primary balance, but they're similar for uh, the descendant Let's get rid of this. Um, this is a slide on the table. So it depends on how long it has A and uh, insertions. So here, for the map of these. So here, here's the definition of uh, uh, synthetic human units. So we here we want a non-trivial genus zero for this in there. Uh, with, uh, with a point where, where we wanted the constraint is a point. Geometrically is a point. So intuitively, so, you, so this implies that uh, for uh, any omega uh, taking the J. Uh, through every point, you will have a stable genus zero curve through that point in the class A. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the X is said to be strongly unilude if you have a yarn, such a yarn with only three insertions. So that's the definition of the uni units. Is that geometry? Yeah, I think it's worth pointing out that people who are not familiar with this that J is very flexible. So if you're in dimension six, you could always construct symplectically embedded spheres through any point. And um, well, as long as as long as there's mild homological. But, but the point is that that curve will disappear when you vary J. And so you can it's no good saying you want to. A J holomorphic sphere through every point. If you don't put something in that makes it invariant under them, and being able to count them by by a gram of Witten invariance means that they're there and they will exist. It's not just something accidental. Right. Yes. Exactly. So yes. if you want to, you know, the naive analog unilunus is that geometry. You want to say, oh, okay, for every point you have a sympathetic sphere, maybe in singular, some singular sphere. And uh, in, 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 yeah, that's it. But uh, as Dusa just noted, this is a wrong, this is 
this is wrong, wrong definition. This is a meaningless definition. Oh, actually, I also have a slide. You have a slide, I slide also yeah, mentioned, but I didn't know, I wouldn't explain what, right. what you just said. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so here we boil down, you see, 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 so we boil down, we use the almost complex. So, so, so view both the pattern and the, uh, and the projected manifold as almost complex. <laughs> yeah, but given a symplectic embedded picture, you can always choose a tame almost complex structure. So it's it's holomorphic. Yeah, yeah, making that yeah single yeah, making that one. Have a choice of yeah. For one, you have a choice of J, and there's a huge choice of J, and you can make one. Uh, of course, making a whole family is a little different. But you can probably do that too. Right? Situation. Okay. Well, not, but uh, I, I have a re I have a related problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah question. But, okay. Maybe I'm anyway, later. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So here's a remark about this definition. I don't remember this definition. Uh, well, as I mentioned, you we also have a descendant of Grom Witten theorem, right? Uh, incorporating this uh, uh this line bundles, cohesion space line bundles uh, on the on a larger space of curves. So, I mean, we can consider these more general invariants, and uh, it turns out it, you can use this more general non-vanishing of of such now more general the invariant uh, to define the unit groups. More unit groups? No, it's actually the theorem says it's equivalent. Yeah, so it's actually right. you don't broaden. Yeah. Okay, so you don't broaden the notion. You actually got an equivalent uh, notion of uh, unit groups. Uh, but this this uh, observation is useful uh, when studying the uh, how the unit roots, how the unit uh, property uh, behaves under blow up. Okay, so we will use this more flexible uh, property in terms of descendant. In the okay. That's one consolation. <clears throat> yeah, it's already mentioned this. Uh, sorry, could you come back to the last of the uh, to see the that one thing. Okay, you just I'll recall the definition of descendant maybe. What do you mean by non-zero curve? Non-zero. Oh, it's it's non-zero curve. Oh, a, okay. A, 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 yeah, a, 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 a
So, so, so this is uh, there. We, we need two point constraints. We need the of a two point constraint. But if the two points appear on the two two, two domains, uh, then, then we don't really get uh, uh, prove the the, the rational. So we cannot define rational connectedness using this this connected domain. And that's make it hard to prove the rational invariance uh, rational connected. <clears throat> okay. So this is this is a, a slide just uh, 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 this is a slide and saying that uh, in general we cannot understand precisely how a single body uh, behaves, but we can uh, understand uh, how they behave as a whole. So precisely what we do okay, in uh, from what actually Malik said, uh, uh, we started with Malik uh, and they somehow they, they form a infinite dimensional vector. Of course, you can index them, right? So, so if you have a vector that all that's index them, it's infinite vectors that uh, go to infinity at both ends. Infinity. So you, you need to index them properly. And now we want to see, okay, so we want to phrase unirootness as a vector, a certain kind of vector being non zero. Right? So we consider all its convenient variance with one point constraint. So, so unirootness is equivalent to say this vector is not a vector. But in turn, we, we can have a, a uh, qualitative understanding how this interdimensional vector transform. Under a flow up. So particularly, we want to show the transformations in a singular. Uh, then, then I, I can uh, prove the unit rule there. This is the, so uh, this is so-called uh, a, okay, correspondence. Such. <clears throat> I, okay, I think if I have time, I will mention uh, some example of this correspondence. But this is sort of this is the what underlies the the bilateral invariance. So I don't particularly just look at one single so single invariant. Well, you will see in algebra geometry how it is how how it works. Actually, uh, yeah, so, so this is we're actually moving on to unit rule varieties in algebra geometry. This is you see how how they are why how they are studied and uh, what properties they have and why they are so important. <clears throat> Uh, I think in the yeah. late eighties and early nineties, uh, Kalar first observed that uh, a projective unit rule the of manifold uh, is has non zero homology there, and then you mean uh, generalized to all projective manifolds. Uh, let's uh, already recall that. The, the unirule notion here is just uh, oh okay no, I haven't but it's just uh, having a curve or a vortex for image so in other words well it's it's covered by rational curves <laughs> right it's covered by rational curves this is a very intuitive uh, definition uh, a basic conjecture here is that uh, these are the precisely uh, varieties uh, with uh, negative Kodari dimension. So that's why these manifolds are not only geometrically appealing, but also very, <laughs> very, very important. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely would. Okay, so what's a well? What's a beautiful property here? Uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry, the K one means uh, Yeah, yeah. Is that the uh, actually not only uh you have rational curves everywhere, but 
the general, general rational curves are unfractive, particularly regular in the sense of gruen witten theory. Uh, and here, uh, it's really, well, here, uh, another word for constructed is that it's actually, it's, uh, the wolfism is a uh, free. Uh, in a sense, the pullback of tangent bundle uh, to P1 uh, breaks into line bundle of non negative uh, pieces. There's no O minus one, O minus two. So you, the, the curves can free, uh, move, can freely move in, in every direction. It's free, so it's free. Uh, but there's a even stronger notion called very free. <laughs> it's where, where each uh, line, line bound of sum on is actually is required to be positive. So that's the notion uh, associated to uh, rationally connectedness. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. uh, so, so, so here's here, here's a relevant property. Of a uh, free curve. So if you have, it says that if you have a free curve in a smooth quasi projective run, then actually there is a domination <coughs> from uh, one which is lower run in y cross with ty to x. Uh, such that uh, the free curve is one of the curve coming from this uh, domination. And uh, well, if you, uh, secondly, if you have such a dominate, domination, uh, then actually uh, general curves from this morphism are free. So the consequence of these properties is that uh, uh, yeah, because outside a kind of a union of a proper closed uh, sub uh, okay, uh, so any morphism with image, uh, any morphism with So if X is general point, so the uh, well, what it says is if you choose a general point and you know you do it by the so all the curves uh right so through x is free. So this is relevant to the moduli space. So so all of this okay, so we're so what why is more built by uh, the exponential map? <laughs> From your pre, from your set of sections. Uh, you know why it's sort of sometimes you know you think like a root surfaces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why it's just the underlying base surface? It's, so I, the, in general, the algebra geometry they can just construct <laughs> this why. I mean, it's not in symmetric geometry. We we we, we do want such a why, but it's very hard because when you look at all the curves, it's not really. In general, we cannot say the space is uh, smooth. In, in dimension four, you you made a big effort to to show the modular space is nice surface, right? It's a surface. I mean, you got to use this. Yeah, you, I mean, why would there's such a map to 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 compare with X? the modular space of curves? Yeah, I mean, in the uh, yeah, holomorphic curves in that particular class yeah. with this free morphism, I mean, it just in geometry, it's the, the image variety, right? Yeah, if, so algebraic geometry allows singularity. They they're fine, right? As long as they're still single, it's still a varieties. So it could be singular, doesn't you know? As long as there's a varieties, <laughs> so that's <laughs> that's something we just uh, cannot achieve. So a uh, related question, the really difficulty about geometry is that we don't have good notions of maps. Uh, Except the pseudo holomorphic maps, it's not a map. Like what Stephen said, generally we do not even have sections, holomorphic sections. This is also a similar difficult. We cannot construct If you have such holomorphic sections, then this imposes very strong conditions on the almost complex structure, almost integral. If you have sufficient many holomorphic maps, more sections, then your more complex structure basically is in a or in a Taylor situation. <laughs> so we just want to overcome the, the difficulty somehow. Uh, 
So oh, very roundabout the way. And so for instance, he's pulling the Barashar equivalent, the uni runes, it's a bad geometry, really takes a um, some quite a bit effort, but while in the algebra of geometry, this is really well, actually you see from here. Uh, uh, already, I think probably you can see that uh, uni runes uh, is partially equivalent to geometry. As long as the recent open set that you have. So that having covered by fractal curves really um, okay. So, so have, here I want to give a like an outline why uh, the color color runs there, and why you need to project the So here the point is you 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 pick a well you pick polarization, and you use the polarization to define the notion of a minimal degree uh, uni rule class. Right. So, so, so in the sense that the, you have curves in this class that cover that cover uh, the uni variety and uh, this degree. So the degree is just pairing with the uh, uh, All right. So, so here it's very okay. This is very nice. And then you look at the modular space. Modular space through. Okay, where x1 is a very general point. x1 is a point constraint. Okay, here, beta is the plus. So I'm using different notation now from, from the set setup. So, I, uh, so 0, 1 means 0, 0, 1 mark point. It is the current plus x. OK, so the point is this. x1 is a very general point. Um, uh, uh, every such curve is free. I already observed. In the car, right? So the modular space has expected dimension. No obstruction bundle, and no all class computation. And, the whole, and the, because it's minimal, it's compact. No break. And so, so we're in a good situation. It's not empty. It's not empty. And then, okay, then how do we get a non zero invariant? Well, you just use the same. Same cohomology classes as H, okay. as the class of H. So, so you, you take these general divisors geometrically. Well, here we're using the cycles point of view. You take the intersections of uh, generic members of the linear system in H. Then you got the cycles, intersection cycles. And then you just count the curves. In this uh, subset, sub, sub modular space, and this number, you, you actually, okay, so you choose R to be the dimension of the modular space. So, one mark for the modular space. And this, then you got a zero dimensional uh, sub modular space, and uh, the count of this zero modular subspace is positive. So, because why it's the positive? Because the number is a degree. So they have big line bundle on the modular space. Okay. So, so, so particularly just choosing this. So the H is a uh, uh, So this is actually a very uh, uh, nice geometric proof why you have a non-zero, zero, uh, zero invariant. <laughs> and for uh, algebraic uh, okay. And uh, well, furthermore, you can show well you, that uh, this projective uni rule is, is invariant to the synthetic information. And uh, actually, I think uh, do some, 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 I think it's, yeah, you also show that uh, you can just choose the version in the following way, particular way. You can so actually you can show. Uh, show that the projective uni rule manifold a strongly uni. Just use three assertions. You get environments with three. Uh, okay. So that's uh, okay. Here's the remark. Uh, okay. Here's just here's a, a just a, a several just slide of several remarks. Uh, in dimension two, 
the only thing that matters is two. Uh, well, in dimension four, what? Okay. Well, when I say the converse, you, you can secondly two is just say what I meant is that uh, up to diffeomorphism, uh, the old synthetic union group of four manifold uh, uh, There is an issue about synthetic structures because uh, maybe. Maybe some synthetic structures not uh, I mean you know, the four manifolds are not Taylor. This is not completely known. <laughs> so but uh, essentially you know, these two unit rule they have to be um here in it. Right, right. But, but I'm just but, saying I'm just saying, okay, this is I'm, this is a subtle thing. So I'm just saying there's a, maybe this So I know I know this X X is uh C E two or something C E one or C But uh, I just don't know the omega is on the channel. Well it may have to be it's like perfect to a st one of the standard yeah. structures on that. It's always a logic class. I mean, we proved, I mean, that's one more. But, 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 but like the synthetic cone is not known to agree with the Kahler cone. Like, like if you blow up like more than nine points. Ah, but we, we if you blow up like more than nine points. But we have to blow up, no, no, you're saying oh, it could be a blow up of these things. Yeah, if you blow up say through nine points, it's not known every oh, synthetic cone. Oh, that's right. If you blow up lots of times, right, then then you then there's a problem of yeah. blowing up right? your time. Yeah. If you assume it's minimal, or, that's true. Min yeah, for minimal cases, then right. you're fine. Yeah. But it's a question of not. The problem is that blowing up is very subtle in this. Right. Taylor, how much can you con con construct? How much? It's like the Taylor form or capacity. Right, right, right. Complex right. form. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but essentially, you can view them as a third, you know, and then the first glance you see there is the same, same classroom format. Oh, right. In higher dimensional uh, situations, uh, certainly you have unit rules in that. So, if we take a uh, symbolic form manifold, but uh, X, as I said, like X in dimension four could be very, it could be very different from uh, outer surface. So, and even you, so you, so there's, there's no hope to classify. Thank you, Nuri. Uh, and uh, there's another okay, very nice uh, class of a unit room. I thought only the Hamiltonian has one. This is a uh, So this is a broad class. This, you just need a circle. Uh, okay, here's some philosophical. Slice. <laughs> I, so here, uh, this, I mentioned the notion of a class. Specific construction. Uh, now, for uni rule the uh, manifold. So we know the kind of class is negative. In some sense. This particular, it's negative on the, uh, the uni rule class. You just do a dimension computation. The unit rule class is defined in terms of different but if uh, the different the dimension of the module space should be non negative. This is just uh, comparing with the dimension formula in the slide. You see that the unit rule take the conic class is negative um, on any unit uni rule. So, particularly, the kind of class cannot be represented by sympathetic sub manifold. <clears throat> and so here's a general question. So, so you, you characterize unit rule manifold in terms of the negative. 
negativity of the uh, AI, uh, in this sense, you know, in sense, but this is related to the uh, negativity of our dimension. Yeah. <clears throat> but we cannot really get to classify alpha, but somehow can you characterize in terms of cohomological invariance? Uh, okay, on the other hand, uh, uh, for okay, let, let's restrict to monotone manifold. So that, this is a re, this is the manifold with the most negative particle class. What's the minus sign? Though? Yeah, yeah. It's in, minus. Ah, uh, yeah, minus k. Yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should, the lambda should be negative. I said right. it's negative, so the lambda should be negative. Right. <laughs> <laughs> negative. So one and negative, define negative into the negative numbers. Right. Right. <laughs> right. 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 Okay. So, uh, uh, I already mentioned these. Yeah, so, so uh, these are the uh, so-called monotone manifolds. Uh, in other geometries, I thought the result, basic result is a, a final manifold. So that can be improved. So you, somehow you can more reduce uh, lateral curves from this assumptions on the canonical class <clears throat> or the, 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 the positivity of the anti-canonical line model. The example is the line model. Uh, in fact, the final manifold is uh, actually connected. Uh, so, so we can ask we can ask whether monotone manifolds are uh, only unique uh, not unique. Uh, we don't know that. But but uh, yeah, so so yeah, this is some question okay. easy to ask at the beginning. here's another remark about unique manifold. Uh, in fact, I think do you you talk about packing. Yes, right. So, so here's a connection with the packing. Yeah. Uh, so I already mentioned the notion of a uh, minimal uni rule class right? in algebraic geometry. So this is defined in terms of the choice of a line model. But uh, for a symmetric manifold, it's, it's of course it's more uh, natural. You just, uh, just uh, pairing with the uh, symmetric form. Uh, they they introduce the notion of minimal uni rule class. Uh, it turns out the uh, from it follows from the monotonicity argument that the size of the uh, any uh, event symmetric ball is bounded by the area of a minimal unit. That's, that's okay. okay. So so maybe okay. Maybe, okay. Maybe I, I will skip the the following slides about the further problem of uh, uh, the new connective problem. So, 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 so here, here, I mean, I, I can uh, talk about some of these problems like tomorrow or the later problem tomorrow Friday. So here, here is maybe just just keep this slide here. Right. This is so what. The following the several following slides that expand on this theme. So, <clears throat> uh, so, so unit rule subvarieties are very accurate. Not unit rule, not only unit rule is themselves important, but class of uh, algebra. Uh, they are very important uh, in direct geometry in the sense they, they appear as the uh, <clears throat> They are the subset that are being operated, that are being contracted, that are being contracted, or in particular, and or flopped. So, uh, well, they're actually uh, so if it think about unit rules sub varieties, roughly divided into two 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 uh, two kinds. They're not negative ones, the negative. Ones. The negative ones, some of the negative ones are the ones being contracted. Uh, but uh, if you have a negative one, sub union sub then uh, that, that will force the, the ending run. So you want to ask whether there is uh, such an analog in, in some geometry. And uh, 
So it, in some sense, uh, we can, we, to some extent, we can show uh, the, the existence of uh, an negative uniruled uh, divisors uh, for both the ambient mathematical thing. Okay. So, so actually, you, now you think, go back, think about that. One of the first, one of the uh, first few slides is up. We do the theorem. So if you have a some kind of format, if you have a sympathetic sphere, it's not negative self in this section. Then this is some kind of format for you. That's just <laughs> important. <laughs> You know, exhibition of this principle, right? Some kind of spheres are unirued uh, two manifolds. Uh, self necessary being non negative just means the whole one is non negative. So, this is in a false non negative case that will force the ambient space to be. Uh, so, we'd like to see how much this generalizes in higher dimension. So, I have some you know, in this direction. Maybe, maybe I just, okay, let, let's just mention this first, just this result without mentioning consequences. So, so here's a, uh, without I prove it, you mean? Uh, it's not too bad. It's actually, you look at the statement here. Uh, so here we would consider a minimal uni. So, so D is a uni root uh, divisor in the synthetic code. And uh, A is a minimal uni root class. Uh, so of course, since a uni root class, so, so there is a corresponding uh, uni root uh, here, how many here? So here it's important how many okay, what, what insertions, what type of insertion are here for this invariant? So here anyway, it's the number of uh, k. Right. So so the, the, the here you have the insertion divided into three kinds of the point. Uh, the, the insertions coming from ambient space and the, 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 in, the intrinsic internal uh, insertions. So if the number of insertions is bounded by the uh, above by the positivity of the pairing between A and D, then, then the ambient space uh, is new. So, so it's not too bad. So in particular, you know, if K is one or zero, then then you just need the more, very minimal uh, negativity of the disappear. <laughs> Of this class, uh, you know, okay. Okay, so we're in the territory. I don't know. Sorry, to, uh, Chan Yu, it's 11. I think it's 11 as well. Oh, okay, I can stop. Yeah. Uh, wait, wait. So I, I we just I skip the the, the uni root part. I just go on quickly say, say a few words, say something about. Let me just start a little later. No, I mean no, I just mean. Yes, you're yeah. right. It, the lecture was meant. Right, but he started. Yeah. So I mean, take a few minutes if you wish to. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, I want to just say something. Okay, uh, what's known about rational connection? Why are you? Maybe 10 minutes. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, so this is definition of rational. Uh, it's uh, now it's never it's, uh, powered by rational curves. You want to say a chain property. Exactly. I need two points. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So this is related to the notion of very free morphism. Uh, so we know this property. Okay, this property is known to be invariant. Uh, this is all property in the algebra geometry and the information invariant and final variety is graphically connected and uh, uh, Tom Graver and Harold Stark approved uh, this uh, nice uh, construction. So the total space is graphically connected. Uh, it's the general uh, fiber. Uh, of the dominant uh, 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 Excuse me. Uh, what is the deformation? Uh, so in the 
the second complex slide. deformation. Complex deformation. Okay, okay. Deformation. Yeah, so, so we're talking about yeah, yeah. this slide is complete in the category algebra yeah. geometry. No some path geometry. Yeah. Yes. For Graeber Harris star, you also need the like, base. You need something about the base, right? We're, we're, yeah, maybe I, I forgot. Right. right. Of course. Why is the, 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 y. You have a Y. And the, yeah, I, I, I didn't say that. Yeah. The general fiber and the Y. Yes. Oh, okay. I, I, okay. I, I didn't say I didn't say that. <laughs> of course. Otherwise, the rules won't matter. It's not right. right. <laughs> so here's an interesting economy in, uh, in the for algebraic surfaces. Uh, uni root, non uni root, uh, rational connected. So it's just of course my rational uh, root rational. And this uh, this trichonomy actually extends to. Uh, I'm sorry, could could you come back? To This is, this is still sliding. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next slide also. This is a uh, So we have the corresponding economy uh, in arbitrary dimension. <clears throat> so I would say the rational categories are very important as well. Yes. Uh, so so here's the definition of. Rational connecting is that geometry. I, I just directly use the descendant in there. And again, it's a non zero curve class. Uh, well, obviously, we can define n. What's the rational cat? We can use n points rather than two points. Uh, well, we already understand very little about two points. <laughs> using two points. So I didn't really study the situation of n point. But uh, another, again, another connection here is connection with the packings. With the, with the packings, but now uh, with packing with more local. So this is, again, this is a, a interesting uh, notion. Just to, you know, from this one, it's not you know. uh, So definitely, we want to see whether uh, uh, rationally connected varieties are synthetically rationally connected, and uh, secondly, whether rationally synthetic rational connectedness is uh, by rational property in synthetic geometry. Um, well, all such questions have positive answer in uh, building four, and, uh, and also here is a, also there's a result of uh, having a rational connected uh, divisor and not, not with some uh, positivity, and whether the, uh, the ambient and uh, there are some results apart from in this direction that is good for the one. <laughs> so, uh, okay, regarding whether a projective manifold, rational projective manifold is uh, rationally connected, uh, well, there are results that are between them four. So here, just uh, some results in dimension three, between Boisong and between 10. So it's, they're all very nice, but they, I, I haven't <coughs> very, all the results haven't very confirmed this conjecture in that region. And for final threefold or the small threefold with small B2 form. So this is use some detailed uh, geometry uh, properties of uh, uh, threefolds. Okay. <clears throat> well, you know, this has something to do uh, with the, okay, maybe here, maybe and let me end with this, this slide. <laughs> you see the difficulty of proving that the conjecture in the previous. Slide. So we naively, what can we still consider a minimal degree class, right? Like the rational connected class. We want to study the modular space of this class, right? <laughs> As in the uni rule case. Uh, in the uni rule case, all the curves are unobstructed. So the longest space finds compact, and uh, we and uh, we have a big line bundle over this modular space from the very ample line bundle H. So I just take certain powers of the H, I get a positive number. And here, you should start with the modular space. If you coming from minimal degree uh, rational connection. So this is this is even for surface. We already know 
rationally connected uh, algebraic surface are rationally connected. So we can prove, we can show the, uh, the existence of non zero invariant, two point theta zero invariant, but, but, the, but the proof does not use this route, go through this route. So here, I mean, the vectors are clear. So you look at the connected curve. But if this, this curve is very negative. So, so it creates, so, so the, the corresponding, so this, this has a lot, this curve has a lot of obstructions. Lots of, lots of obstructions. <laughs> uh, I, I think just stop here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We can interrupt you with a lot of questions, but are there any more questions? Yeah, uh, I was. I'm interested in those types of the results you were talking about, uh, Bazan and Chu Tian, about <clears throat> the um, finding non-vanishing two-point Gromov wind invariants in final three-folds. Do you know of results for four-folds? I know Tian has a couple, but that, that's all I know. You know I, I, yeah. I didn't list it before. Uh, so, yeah, see, I mean, I know, like, uh, the B2, uh, the B2 of rational connect threefold, the number could be larger as 10, right? Like, reading the previous paper, so. <laughs> Right. Like the number can be <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So, there's still a way <laughs> so even for uh, we thought well, yeah I think a number of this proof in two case somehow yeah, you just contract to we could one then you understand the truth right you know you the one case well, I did. You study. You study. You no. You you didn't write, but you have a related paper with Susan Tolman. I found out what you call. I think I'm so fixed point. I remember B two all of them, the four of them, B two E for the one. So they're much smaller. Seems to be still very difficult. I look at this, check some of his arguments. It's a nice very. Very nice arguments. Yeah. Um, I can understand. <laughs> I believe. Okay. Any more questions? Well, there's like a speaker.